Uh, hi friends, in this video we will discuss about the break analysis or break CFD analysis. How exactly we can model the uh, break CFD analysis. So now we can see this is the um, break or this is the drum or disc what I just want to stop which is rotating at a specified RPM. And these two are the packs, break packs which tries to uh, go against to the rotation and which will generate the amount of heat. Right, and this is the fluid domain which I have considered and in which the drum or the brake disc is rotating. So, I will just try to keep only the fluid part. So, as you can see, so those are where the disc and the pads are present that is empty in the fluid side because those are occupied by these solids. And when you go to the group section, I will just try to display everything. What are the name of sections I have given? Right, uh, so you can just see. So this is the left brake pad interface. What I have mentioned. This is the left brake pad interface. This is the right solid interface. Solid means it is the drum. What I am considering. This is the left solid interface. What I am considering. This is the right pad interface. What is there? This is the left fluid interface, excluding the pad. And this is the right fluid interface again, excluding this pad. And this is the center solid interface. And this is a center fluid interface. One is on to the side of the fluid, another is on to the side of the solid or the drum. And the remaining everything I have selected for the faces, three faces, and I have given as an outlet. Okay. So now we will go for the meshing part. So I have just double clicked on the mesh setup. It is a fluid meshing what I am trying to activate. And as I have a student version, so it is a four core machine or four mesh processor four solver process which i can use and just click on start so it will try to open and i'll just go with the coarse machine not at all a refined machine or not at all a accurate mesh because it's just a demonstration purpose so when it uh, tries to open uh, i'll just import the geometry and after importing the geometry we can just go to the outline view and I'll try to mesh the things. So these are the assemblies. So one which has the components of pad plus fluid and the other is the wheel. So I have taken these three as a combinedly one geometry and this is into the other geometry interfaces. Right. So then click on remesh. This is collectively which I will rename it as fluid and pad. This is uh, just remesh individually. Okay. Now I'll go to this and I'll select this draw part. I will select this part with the right mouse click button. I'll go to the set boundary tape and make it as an interface. So this should be an interface for us. Okay. Similarly, right fluid interface. So this should also be an interface for us. Okay. So again, this is left fluid interface. So here we are trying to use a sliding mesh approach. In sliding mesh approach, we need to create the mesh interfaces across which uh, the parts will try to be moved. So that's the reason why we need to create all these interfaces. This, this is a non-conformal mesh. That's the reason why we need to create all these mesh interfaces. After it's done for fluid pad, now to open uh, with for the other wheel side also draw this right click interface similarly this one so interface and the solid center you can select this and turn that to interface after this uh, right click and compute the volumetric regions so there is other region which is not inherent or not required for us you just try to type and make it dead and turn the fluid to fluid part. Now go to cell zones, auto mesh, go to poly. I'm not giving any bone layers or anything. I'm just taking for only reference case, apply mesh. Yes. So the mesh will be completed. Now again, you can just remesh for this also. Auto mesh, apply mesh. So now we got the mesh. 
where these three parts are into one region and this wheel is into the other region. So now there is a relative motion between the wheel and the fluid and pads, right? So that relative motion is being uh, connected using these interfaces. So left solid interface and right solid interfaces will have a connection with right pad, right fluid, left fluid, left pad. Whereas center solid interface will have a connection with center fluid, right? So now I'll we'll try to switch to the solution and we will try to create the mesh interfaces option for all these interfaces. Before that, we need to run it in a transient mode of simulation. So try to run in a transient mode, keep transient and just go to models on the energy because we need to give certain heat flux for brake packs and that heat flux I'm just uh, giving uh, a random value but for accurate value you need to uh, try to calibrate from analytical or from structure simulations uh, yes and for analytical I think you can refer many papers you will get the exact value what will be uh, depending on the rate of uh, deceleration of the brake what is the amount of kinetic energy that will be converted into the heat so that is a direct conversion you can find out from any publication or from your relevant data where the kinetic energy is being talked I got the drop in kinetic energy that will be raised in the heat energy and that can be given so that value I am taking uh, take it as uh, a constant value now for a just explanation purpose now before that we will go to the wheel and make it as a mesh motion so mesh motion is a sliding mesh so units angular velocity will turn into rpm close now double click got the wheel motion mesh motion and I'll SN 1500 as a rpm and uh, that is along the Z motion, Z only, our uh, uh, direction of rotation is so click on apply, close, and uh, now uh, go to this and right double click on the boundary conditions. So uh, we have left one thing here, we have not given that uh, outlet part. So we'll just, I'll, I'll uh, clear the solution here and go back to a um, mesh part again and try to assign that outlet as an outlet this it's it's a not a big deal it's just uh, selecting that outlet part and turn into an outlet that even in fluent also we can do but uh, it's a good practice that we do it in the mesh itself so just go to the outline view go to mesh object fluent bad and in the fluent bad right click this outlet and click on draw so you collect this uh, data so you just select this option and make it as an pressure outlet okay so just verify all these are in interface mode or not this should be in interface mode right so just for reference we'll just select so the these it right now uh fluent has the option of just showing it in the previous set boundary condition as pressure outlet but i sh i think these are also in interfaces only you do not worry Go to switch solution mode, yes, yes. Again, I'll just go through the setup of making it transient. And in the model, turn on the energy. Okay. The cell zone, go to solids and fluid. So, your yeah, units, it is uh, angular velocity in RPM, close and go to solids mesh motion 1500 apply close the boundary conditions it's an outlet and we have the interfaces left so we need to create a mesh interface between right solid and your right fluid similarly uh, left solid and left fluid all these interfaces you can just right click new mm -hmm. select all these interfaces so automatically depending on the mapping it creates an interface between the uh, particular uh, corresponding things you can just see center fluid is created with center fluid solid right solid is created with left brake pad left solid is created with left fluid again left right solid with right fluid right solid with right pad so depending on the connectivity it automatically creates you do not worry about that now after that you just need to go to this value center fluid so center fluid will have a uh, motion right that interface should have a motion of 1500 rpm so you just need to mention that 1500 apply similarly uh, here we need to have it for left fluid also the rpm about 
1500 because those interfaces will rotate about the jet so we need to mention that rpms or else you will not get the uh, motions or you will not find any velocities that have been occurring this is the velocities conditions what we need to mention for the wheel rotation in a sliding mesh approach and uh, for right solid interface you need not worry for but right pad and left pad you need to mention the heat flux values which will be generated i will take some random values only for right left right pad So I've taken this. Now uh, we need to create some output uh, files. So this is a double pressure solver. That is a warning it is showing. We have already done it. So go to graphics and click on counters. So we need to select the temperature. Uh, before that, we'll just go to mesh and try to select a few parts where we can visualize the mesh motion in a much more clearer way. I'll just display it. I'm just verifying which are the right options for us to mesh to get display. Yeah, so this will be much more uh, perfect way for the mesh display on the display edges. Yes, so this will give the motion, little motion. And just off the static shadows and everything so that it will have a much more clearer way. So, save display, close. Similarly, create counters for the temperature. Same options what you have selected uh, for the mesh. Select those options. Just verify whether you are getting the uh, same thing or not. I think you have left, left out something else. And there should be something else that we need on pads. Okay, what else we need to on? Just go to the mesh and check what we have on, what we haven't done here. So it should be 301, which we have not done. I think so. But also we have done 49, 48. What is that we are missing? Why we are not getting the same sides on both of the ends? 51. Yeah, at least here we got it. Close it. Oh, and we need to set that range. I cannot run for a few simulation time, so that's the reason I'm just setting the range here. I'm mentioning it, it only 300.05. Right, so this is the region range what I want to have. And I'll just change this to uh, exponential and increase the precision value. And I'll make it general. So this will be our range. I'll just close it. Okay, this will be uh, much more uh, pleasing to check. And now the other part is having the counters. Let's select two planes so that that will also make a uh, Select the two planes and create for velocity and compute and display. So here it's showing a range of 2.89. I am not bothered about that huge range. I'll keep it as 0 0.1. Save display. Okay. So these are the three uh, things or counters or post processing which I need to uh, check for variation in every solution time step. 
so one is for uh, mesh i'll select two for every two time steps i'm saving and uh, for mesh it is is active okay and other is animation 2 which is for counter 2 again this is also for two time steps use act to means the current uh, uh, face of the current uh, view will be activated okay and other is for the counter 1 again two time steps use active okay right so now we will go to run calculation i will take as uh, 0.001 as my time step size and number of iterations is 500 or 5000 okay click on calculate so after running through certain time steps so now uh, the solution has been completed i mean stopped at a few uh, iterations now i'll just verify how exactly it's looking like uh, so the range what we will select here is, uh, is 300.05 so you can see here if you can clearly see uh, different uh, areas have been shared with different variants 300.02 so that i will uh, show it in the animation so that it will be much more uh, clear and pleasing to you go to playback and go to animation and just select this So you can see it, is, it has a motion. It is moving down, right? I'll stop here for this, and I'll just go to the second part. Okay, we'll check this. This here. Yeah. So now you can see there is a variation in temperature on the disk. It's changed up. Now it is not 300 anymore. 300.02, 300.03. It has that variation. So I have run only for 0.5 or 0.6 seconds. Uh, sorry, 0.8 seconds. So during the process, it is temperature is changing from 0 300 to 300.04. As you progress, it can reach up to higher, higher, and a higher temperature, right? So I'll just close this, and after that, we'll go to this point. Sorry, I'll just show you. Now you can see the velocity is around the eight domain. I think you can see now the color is changing from blue to uh, some white color. Yeah, so it means it's changing from. Uh, it's around 0 0.2 now it's changing into much more white i'll stop here you can see the center point has the velocity is increased so as the time progresses the more and more the velocity will be we go down to that and similarly you can just check verify the heat transfer coefficients also what is the heat transfer coefficient area weighted go to uh, wall fluxes that surface heat transfer coefficient we can select these walls, center solid interface in that and compute. Sorry, this is the think, one second. I need to check. I think this is the yeah, you can see there is a heat transfer option. It's very low because uh, it's just started. I have not uh, given any huge uh, uh, numbers, and that's to indeed it need to progress much and much. So, if the temperature is going higher and higher, you'll get a huge heat transfer coefficients. The temperature is around only 300.05 it's for only demonstration purpose we can run further so to get more and more heat transfer coefficients as you all know heat transfer coefficient depends on the reference values so the reference value what it is taking for the temperature t infinity t ambient is 300 sorry 288.16 right if you change that decrease that increase that heat transfer coefficient values changes uh, hope this video helped you in understanding how to model the break thermal analysis or break pad CFD analysis in order to have the temperature variation on the break packs as well as uh, the velocity distribution around the break pad. Please do subscribe and share the video among your groups and uh, like it. Thank you.